But now let's say you want to dial it up even more. So you want to add more resistance. Before we get into this, there's one way you can do that immediately. And let's actually do it over here. As you start adding, you should generally always practice things in the safest way possible. So a way to increase the safety of any sort of squat movement is to make sure you have something in front of you that you can grab onto should you happen to lose balance, and something behind you so that if you do lose your balance, you can just sit down. Easy enough. So when you want to increase resistance on the way down, we already talked about you're going to go slower on the way down than you are on the way up. Also, you'll notice that when you squat, the lower you get, the more challenging it is. So if you want to challenge yourself even more, you can imagine squatting down nice and slow, and then at that bottom, at that most challenging moment, just try to hold that. Just right there, hold that movement. This is called an isometric contraction, and it's a great way to increase the intensity of your exercise without increasing any risk. One thing that's great about everything we're talking about here is you'll notice this is all very slow. This is all very controlled. This is all very methodical. It's very difficult if you do this correctly to injure yourself because safety is priority number one, right? There's no better way to make your exercise routine completely ineffective than to hurt yourself so that you can't do anything. So please always put safety as priority number one. And that's a good rule in general. If, if you hear about a new exercise strategy or a new exercise technique, just ask yourself, like, what's the likelihood that I'm going to get hurt? Because especially as we get older, and I can tell you this from experience, when you get injured, oftentimes you never get completely better, right? Like if you blow your knee out like me, I've blown my knee out three times, it, it ain't getting better. My, my knee is broken. So we really want to ensure that we don't break ourselves during our effort to heal ourselves, right? We don't want to experience that ironic moment. So we squat down, we come back up, we can hold our balance by holding onto the, something in front of us, and we've got a chair behind us to ensure we're staying safe. We can increase resistance by going down slowly, pausing at the bottom, and then popping back up. But as you get stronger, that's not even going to be enough for you. You're going to need even more resistance. So how do you add resistance on the way down but not on the way up because if you do it on both ways, you're going to get stuck down and won't be able to come back up. Well, here's how you do this. You have two limbs. You've got your two legs. So what you can do is on the way down, for example, take one leg, maybe step it a little bit forward or just consciously put less weight on one leg. So I'm going to focus on working my right leg a bit more eccentrically on this movement, not so much my left leg. The way I'm going to do that is when I squat down, I'm going to naturally push less through my left leg than I am through my right leg. So you could imagine that instead of 100 pounds sitting on this leg and 100 pounds sitting on this leg, I'm actually going to have, let's say, 150 pounds sitting on this leg, right? So I'm, I'm holding onto this for balance because I'm slightly off balance because I'm putting more weight on this leg than I am on my left leg. And I'm going to do everything we talked about before, go down slowly, hold the position at the bottom. And this leg was able to slowly lower 150 pounds because it is stronger eccentrically than it is concentrically. If I now tried to stand up doing that same thing, I wouldn't be able to. But that's okay, because I don't need to. To stand up, I'll just use both legs equally.